Good morning, folks. Um, so today is uh, my ride day 33. So that's the 33rd day that I've actually got on the bike and ridden a fair distance. And ride days are, ride days are normally uh, when I'm going from one city to another or I'm in one city, I'm going to some big landmark or something like that. Usually over about 100 miles um, is what I call a, road, a ride day. Um, so as I've said in, in some of the previous uh, um, episodes, if you want to call them that, um, I'm riding now out of El Tanque Rojo, which is in Nicaragua, and I'm heading towards Yoko, Costa Rica, which is a bit of a tourist town. But as I've mentioned in previous videos, I had limited time to get to um, Panama to get on my boat, so it was time to get, get tracking. And so basically every day now I'm, I'm, um, I'm crossing borders. I think I've crossed four, three borders in three days and today is going to be my fourth border crossing. Um, and as with border crossings is leave at first light. Um, stay, stay in a town close to the border. You don't want to be crossing borders around midday because uh, that's when they have their um, they, they have their little, you know, sleepy bye, go bye byes for a few hours, and uh, and usually they're pretty short staffed and it's pretty busy. Um, the other thing you that you're realising in border crossings is that every border crossing, um, all most of these countries have ra no rail networks, so all their goods are transported by truck. which then means the border crossings are always very busy. Um, South America is a completely different story. And um, in, I had my worst experience in one con uh, country as far as time length goes, and that was in uh, uh, on the Ecuador side of the uh, Colombian Ecuador border, uh, where there was a there was short staffed and there was a line of maybe 500 people and a three hour just to wait in one line to get your immigration stamp. And then after that, you've got to go get your uh, your import permit, which wasn't too difficult there, but it was just ridiculous. Um, and then when I, you know, I remember we getting to the Ecuador, and I'll talk about it in that video, but I got to the front door, and on the El Salvador border, um, they actually tore, when they swiped my passport, they tore the top corner of it as they went to swipe it. They didn't put it into the thing properly. And it just tore about, less than half a centimetre, maybe five, uh, 50 millimetres or 30 millimetres of it, but it started causing me problems because it, it's tampered. As far as um, a border security, they, they think it's tampered with, so they've got to, they always show it to somebody. I check that, you know, all my other data, uh, driver's licences, all that sort of stuff, a copy of the passport when it was in mint condition, um, like a, PD, a PDF copy, you know, so, in, so on that Ecuador border, after three hours of waiting in a line, I got to the front door and there's this, just this, this loser guy who was accepting bribes from people to get to the front of the line. Um, uh, he, um, he said, uh, it's invalid. And he, and he wasn't gonna let me in the door. And I said, just let me in, I've been waiting three hours basically. And, I, and, and then I got to the front, uh, to the counter and the girl who, who processed me didn't even mention it. Didn't even mention it. So this arsehole was going to turn me around. Uh, anyway, so anyway, I spent the night in uh, in in uh, El Roque, and uh, it's like a little lakeside village. Uh, Malasa Mayasa uh, is uh, the bigger town which I'm going through now. Um, that's by another a different lake. Um, beautiful little place, you know. People smiling, happy. Everyone going to work early in the morning. I mean, this is, this is first light, basically. Just a beautiful place. Um, a little touristy, I imagine, in the real high season, but uh, very nice, you know. And the restaurant across the road, really nice food and, and good beers after a really tough ride the day before. Um, so yeah, getting back to the border crossing, stay, close, stay at a place close to the border, get up first light, I'm probably, 50 miles from the border uh, here, so I'm about an hour and a half away from the border. You're not going to get 60 miles an hour going through this, you know, you're not going to do that. Um, but stay close to the border, get all your paperwork done the day before, make sure you've got 
you know, I have all my paperwork in plastic satchels. So uh, waterproof little little zip zip bags, you know, Ziploc bags. So I have all my passport, all, all my documents from the pre previous border, receipts, import permit, every every bit of documentation I'm given from the previous border. I have in one satchel. In my other satchel, I have my, all my originals, uh, my pass, my uh, original passport, my type original title and original registration and in the third satchel i have copies of everything and then in my backpack i've got more copies so i usually have two or three copies for each border uh, just in case uh, of each document uh, passport uh, driver's license um, uh, registration and title um, i also have an international driver's license but not once on my whole trip did anyone want to see my international didn't even ask for it once, but I told you must have it, so you must have it. Um, so yeah, so having all that together in one bag, in one, I've got a little uh, little Velcro, uh, little little, it's like a flat bag uh, that you put documents in. So I've got everything in that. So I'm ready to go. Um, I've got all my everything charged from the night before. Um, I've backed up everything. You'll find that you just can't upload videos anywhere. Um, no matter how much you, you want to try it. To upload a video, the only way you can really do it is to cre create the video, then compress the video, um, and then go and upload it while you're sleeping and you might you might get lucky. But a lot of the times, whenever I tried it, the, it would break um, and the internet and it would say it didn't upload and stuff like that. So the smart way to do it is to upload everything to Google Photos. So if you've got, if you can upload videos, upload them to the Google Photos. I'm going to talk more about that as, as we get into it. But this is, oh, this is, I'm going to love. This was just so nice. So I'm only doing probably 25, 30 mile an hour through here. But you got to remember, early in the morning through towns and villages, all the kids are going to school, all that sort of stuff. So you just got to be a little bit careful and. You know, be really alert because there's lots of people going to work on horses and carts and you come around a corner and you're doing, if you're going fast and they're doing five mile an hour, there's trouble, my friend. So the place I stayed at was quite a nice place, but uh, a little bit dated. I was about the only one staying there. Internet was terrible. Um, you know, um, <sighs> And you start, I mean, you're starting to get used to the bad, bad internet, you know. Um, even though they advertise high-speed internet, um, you can complain all you like, but they, you know, they're not gonna, you know. It's just, it's like, yeah, you know, shouting on a box. Um, no one's listening, shelling pencils. Um, yeah, so, today I didn't have that big a ride. Um, this, this border crossing, getting out of uh, Nicaragua was quite, you know, 30, 45 minutes, just di going through to, to different points. And, um, you you know, as, you, as you're coming into the border, um, there's a lot of, there'll be a lot of trucks lined up. Nearly in all situations, unless somebody stops you, uh, some official stops you, in all situations, just ride up past all the trucks and cars, because normally you can park your bike right outside the booth. Um, the only time you would never, you know, I mean, you don't ride up past cars and trucks at at, uh, at toll booths and things like that. You know, um, in a, in a lot of the countries, the more advanced countries, and you would call Costa Rica, uh, Costa Rica and Nicaragua are more advanced. You'll find that you have to pay tolls. Um, on on some of the less developed countries, they just let all the motorbikes through. Uh, there's a little side area and you've got to be a little bit careful because if you've got a big adventure bike with lots of gear on it sometimes they're not thinking about that the area that you've got to ride through don't never ride through those areas fast i'm basically you nearly waddle through them because there's usually things on the each side and you can only just fit your motorbike through um, i had to nearly come to a stop a few times just because of the um because uh, that was so narrow and they had like bins on each side and stuff like that so yeah but um, Mexico 
Uh, parts of Mexico you could ride around and, and then uh, that was through Baja you could ride around some of the toll booths but in Mexico generally you had to ride, you had to pay tolls and there was lots of them if you're riding on the main roads um, and in some cases you can't avoid the main roads because there's no other roads to get from point A to point B um, but uh, yeah so the roads here in Nicaragua as you can see are pretty nice for most of the, most of the country um, I think they start getting a little bit rougher as I get nearer the border, but um, for some reason most countries don't really care about their their borders um, and the quality of the roads. Peru was an exception. After when I went from Ecuador to Peru, I, Ecuador I was on a dirt road for 200 plus miles and it was raining like drizzle and uh, slippery as all hell. That's where I had an accident. Uh, if you watched one of my previous videos, you saw that I had an accident there as well. I came off my bike in a big pothole. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to talk about um, my cameras and, uh, and while I'm on, on this ride day, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about uh, the cameras that I'm using. On the, on, the, on the helmet, I've got a Drift Ghost S. Um, I like it because it's uh, minimal, a lot smaller file size than the GoPro, probably about 30-40% less than the GoPro for the similar type file. Um, you're looking at probably, for every 10 minutes you're looking at about one gigabyte. Well I think the GoPro you're looking at about two or three gigabytes for about 10 minutes of footage. Uh, but I've got this shooting at, uh, at 1.920 and at uh, 60 frames a second. Um, so it's sort of perfect for this, as long as you've got decent light. It's not that great a camera in, in, in the darkness, but neither is the GoPro. Um, sorry, I've got a, a uh, garbage truck. I'm going to stop talking in a second. Okay, sorry about that. So yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, photography and, 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 uh, and videography and stuff like that. So, Let's be honest, the videos are a pain in the ass. I mean, it's great shooting them and, and you love being able to look back and all that sort of stuff, but until the world gets gets with it and uh, maybe Google does their balloons and Facebook does their satellites or whatever they're planning on doing, where the world, the whole world has really good internet, it's a pain in the ass. Um, the problem with videos is, I mean, the problem I had um, and on my next trip, I'm going to learn from that. Is I'm really going to get my audio set up correctly. So basically, I mean, the perfect situation would be to record and they record your audio as you're riding, and then be able to press pause, and then a pause on your on your recording, and then press play again uh, when you're ready to record again then press pause and then press play and be able to uh, record the audio, it creates one big file. Um, it creates one big file and then what happens is um, it, uh, the, the camera has a little memory, uh, uh, a little bit of memory in it that basically remembers where you're at when you pause. So if you, if you change batteries, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then and then you play again and at the end of it it creates one big long file with chapters uh, some sort of settings in the file where it, for YouTube for chapters um, some sort of standard across the board where you can actually create chapters for it um, and then at the end of the day you can just do some you know if you wanted to do some Lightroom like type editing on your video to create some effects or whatever you can do that um, but if you want to just upload it, you can upload it. But at, at the moment, you end up with like 20, 30 little videos from each day. Sometimes you forget to stop the press, you forget your recording and you, you forget to stop and you, know, and you just end up with all these files that you've then got to go in and look at and then, and then trim, um, uh, trim them, which I'm not doing for the ride days. For some of the other video series, I'm going to be doing stuff. I'm just uploading them and then speeding them up and trying to keep them in the 30 to 40 minute mark range mark, which speeds them up by two times or three times the actual speed. Um, 
Yeah, so you, you, it's it's a bit of a pain, and uh, you've got to you've got to get the process right, which I didn't before you left because I changed cameras at the last minute. Uh, about a month or two before I left, I changed to this uh, Drift Ghost, which was a bad move. It's a great camera, but a bad move as far as knowing it, knowing the insides out outs of it. You really need three to six months of using a camera and using it all the time to get the best out of it for yourself. Um, but so next time I'm going to make sure I've got, because what I did is I bought the camera and then I bought a separate um, um, mouthpiece for it, um, so for recording audio, and none of, I had like four of them, I bought four of these Sony mix and none of them worked, they all had this crackling sound, even though they had the right jack, it wasn't until I got to, to Cartagena that I got the 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 ones from um, Drift Innovations, the, the, the um, microphone from them, that it started working properly. So, yeah, so that's why I'm doing the voiceover now, which is probably better that I do it now anyway, because I, I won't be just gibbering on about stuff while you're riding on the bike. But, um, yeah, it was, it, it's, it's just a bit of a challenge. The, 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 the other thing you have to have on your phone, whether you've got an iPhone or an Android phone, is something to back up all your photos with. And, and the best one to use, uh, in my opinion, and like I've used them all, I've used the Apple image thing, Dropbox, all that sort of stuff, but the number one tool by a mile is a, a, a Google Photos. Um, so what happens is, is that every single photo you take on your phone or the import into your phone, so whether it's from your GoPro or from the drift camera or, or wherever, every single one of those is, uh, is backed up. So as an example, if you take all the videos and photos from your GoPro and you import them into your, onto, your, onto your phone, uh, Google will back up. You can select which folders you want backed up so which image folders you want on your phone backed up and automatically back them up. And you just select uh, uh, upload original, so it will upload all the original photos. It takes up more space. You get, with a basic Gmail account, you think you get 15 gigabytes anyway. I'm well over that, I'm at over one terabyte now. Uh, and I have to pay a, a few dollars per month. Um, however, it, it is easily the best way. And if you need more uh, memory, if you, if you need more space and you want to get it cheap, get into being a Google reviewer and review hundreds and hundreds of places you've been to and Google will give you like 100 gigabytes or an extra 10 or 20, 50, 100 gig, I think I got 100 gigabytes once I got to the 400 mark, I got 100 big gigabytes free. So there are ways to do it as long as you leave legitimate reviews and, and once you start doing that Google trusts you more and more and so therefore when you make edits to maps and stuff like that they go through pretty much immediately. Um, so yeah, get, get into, get Google Photos app, uh, and then go through the settings, make sure you back up the originals, especially for your photos, because you want to have the best quality photos, even if you delete them later. Back up the originals, and it'll back up all your photos and videos. And, and not only that, what I do for each day is I also, for so when you log in on the desktop to Google Photos, or even on the phone, you can arrange all your photos into albums. So. If you upload all the photos from the day, as long as your, your camera settings are, are correct with the time and date, uh, and it's and it's a, a good idea to to make sure you set the cameras to the time, date, and minute, uh, so that everything syncs your camera and your phone and all that sync because uh, that way you'll have them in uh, in uh, in the right order when they're uploaded. Um, and the things you, with Google Photos, the the edits you can make. So once you've uploaded photos, you just go to that day in Google Photos and you select all the photos and then create new album. And like I, I call this album Ride Day 33, uh, El Roque to uh, Jaco, um, Costa Rica. And so that's in my albums. Uh, and then what I do later on is I go and cull all the bit of the crappy images and just keep the good ones. Um, and then once I've done, once I've finished all these videos, which is going to take me another six months, with all the videos I have. Once I've finished all these videos, I'm going to delete all the original videos, probably. Well, not all of them, just all the, the ones that are just basic writing ones. <coughs> so, um, 
Yeah, so you're backing them up. What you can also do is you can obviously do your Instagram-y type things with all your images, if you like, uh, to make them pop a bit more. Um, you can also um, uh, edit the location. You can edit the time and date of, of the images. You can also um, you can you can also uh, and what what Google would, so for each day if you create an album Google will if you've got like 40 50 photos and about five or six videos Google will automatically create a video of that day as well uh, just a, a montage of all the photos from that day. Some things it doesn't do, which I wish it would do, is, I'll get pulled over here. Um, this is a, this is a, the border coming uh, get from on the Nicaragua side. And I'm, I'm getting told I've got to stop and, and tell me where I've got to park my bike and then he checks over some documents. And this guy here in the red is the guy who wants to help me. So here I'm, he's, he's explaining to me uh, the process I've got to go through to get out. Um, so I've got to go up a little bit further and there's a little, a little place on the right hand side um, where I've got to do, I've got to uh, hand in my passport and my, um, the rest of my, uh, my, my import permit from Nicaragua. They're always pretty good, these, these sort of guys. There's some, sometimes you get people that just aren't interested in trying to help you. They think you should be organised and and uh, and that. So you'll see you'll see that uh, these riders up ahead, these all these people come up to you and they they tell you they can help you and all that sort of stuff. It's sometimes it's worthwhile. But the thing is, you've just got to know your costs coming in there. If, if you know your exact cost when you come into a, a country, then you're not going to get ripped off. Um, and and that, look, these guys are just trying to make as much money as they possibly can. Um, see, what I'm looking up now is my Google Keep, and I'm going through uh, my days. And so I see, you can, I can, you can see the yellow strip along the top. But basically, I this guy's an Eduardo a, a, a vehicle import. Um, but I know exactly what my cost is, you know, um, and I know it's only one dollar to get to get out of Nicaragua. I've got to pay a pay a docket fee. So this guy will take me up there and up on the right hand side up here. Uh, there's a little building here, so you can see. And the, the, this this family here I met along the way. I met them a few times, a couple of times. They're really cool people. They're from the U.S. and they were travelling as a family. It's a husband and wife and their daughter. I'm pretty sure the daughter's name was Grace. And she was really cool, um, and she was riding on the back, but her mum, mum and dad were on the front, uh, had their own bikes. Um, they were really nice people. Um, so yeah, I, I had a helper at that border, um, only because I knew, like, uh, by doing some research, there was quite a bit of a, you know, yeah, like when you got into Costa Rica, you had a, um, when you in Costa Rica, you had like a, you had to go, you had to go and get your you have to go and pay a fee uh, when you first uh, get in there um, and then you've got to go get, get a stamp in one building and then you've got to go um, across the road and get a, the aduana and then you've got to hand it back in for processing and then you've got to go and buy your insurance which is at another building and I just didn't want to deal with the hassle and for 10 US dollars um, you know really to give someone 10 US dollars to help me I showed them I know exact cost. It was a, I had to pay twenty dollars for insurance for one month, which is quite high. So I think it's only thirty dollars or twenty-eight dollars for three months. But I was, you know, I was only going to be there for one night, but two days. But uh, you know, I, you know, I don't have a, you don't have that choice. I just a two-day uh, 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 insurance thing. So it was twenty dollars, and that was probably the longest part of the process was. The first part of the process was a pain in the backside going in and out and around the front of the building and I've written about that in my on my blog post. Um, but you know, it wasn't I think I think the total time was about two and a half hours, two and a quarter, two and a half hours to get through, which is one of the better ones in Central America. Um, and then basically I, I got got cracking and uh, to head to Jaco to Jaco, which is a very pretty much a big tourist town in 
in Costa Rica. But as I said, I had to I had to get moving pretty quickly. So anyway, going back to Google Photos. So so what Google Photos does at the end of if you upload photos, so if you upload a uh, a certain amount of uh, just getting way through a military checkpoint there. If you uh, if you upload it and you create albums and you upload a day, Google will probably create, if you've got quite a few photos and quite a few videos, Google will just automatically, it looks through that, their algorithms look through it for interesting things in your video and they'll actually create a little movie, usually one to two minute movie, which is pretty good to throw up on Instagram or something like that for your days, right? It'll do it automatically. The next day you'll get a notification on your phone saying we've created a new movie. And you have a look at it, you can, you can edit the title of it and, you can even edit the sound that goes with it. You can even remove the, some of the photos on your phone and then just save it. That will save the newer version. Um, the, um, it'll also create, if you wanted to take panoramic images, so on your phone you, you took one photo, then took another photo next to it, another photo next to it, as long as it's quite level and you've got decent light, Google will automatically stitch those together. It knows that you're, they're right next to each other by the time, the location, and the, obviously the, the photo, and, and it creates stunning uh, panoramas. It will also create some, if you've taken a lot of photos in succession of someone jumping up and down or something like that, take 20 photos in five seconds or something, it will also make little GIF animations with any of those as well automatically. Um, and then it, and it will save it into that day. So if you want to, it will automatically save it to that date. So with the video from that day, if you wanted to include it in that album, you've got to go back and, and select those new creations to add to that album. Um, and so from that album, usually I just named it, you know, uh, Nicaragua to Costa Rica, whatever the ride day was. And then I created a new, another album on top of that album of the favorites from that, from that day. Uh, and they're the ones I'll end up keeping. I'll end up deleting the other album. Um, so, um, so that's basically how Google Photos works, and it's a fantastic tool. It's a huge time saver. You set it for original, as I said, and you set it to make sure it only backs up over Wi-Fi. So when you have Wi-Fi access, it will automatically back up. Um, it depends on your cell phone service, but in America, you can have it on anything, but when you go outside, if you've got a fair bit of data, but when you go outside of America, I would very strongly suggest that you um, that you only have it on Wi-Fi, so that whenever you have a Wi-Fi connection, it'll start backing everything up. Yeah, so, I mean, with your cameras, you're just always gonna find that you're, um, that, that as long as you can connect your camera, whatever it is, so I've got, I've got like, um, I've got my Olympus EM1, that's a terrible photo, my Olympus EM1, um, which is my big, camera which I ended up getting rid of uh, once I got to cut Carter Haney because I wanted to lose some weight and you know with the camera and the lenses you know with 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 phone cameras now the only issue with phone cameras is light uh, and darkness they don't take good photos and unless you're a real professional photographer I would probably ditch using one of those just use your handhelds uh, with your phone and all that sort of stuff. They, you know, the new Google phones, the Android phones, and the ne uh, the, the latest uh, iPhones take great photos and really high res photos as long as you've got decent light. Um, so I've got, so I have uh, the big Olympus. I've also got two Olympus uh, trackers, the TG trackers, the tough. Uh, they're their uh, uh, action cameras. Excellent, excellent cameras. Uh, 180 degree view. Um, really good and you have lots of different modes um, for it, just just like the GoPro, tougher than the GoPro, waterproof out of the box, um, and for some reason the, the lens just sheds water off them, so when it rains, not like your case on a GoPro which gets covered in dots, the actual uh, the lens just seems to repel water. This is, I think I have, I, I stop off here and have uh, some lunch. They have these, uh, these soups here with seafood and everything in them, um, and that's where I'm sitting down at my lunch, it was friggin' nice. Um, but, uh, so I've got the TG trackers, great, great camera. Automatically I can just back them up onto my phone. Um, 
and then automatically whenever I've got Wi-Fi, they'll start backing up. And even if you've even if Tony backed up 20 photos out of 100 and videos, when you go to the next Wi-Fi, it'll continue backing up until they're all backed up, and then you can delete them off your phone. Um, same with the GoPros, works the same with the GoPros. So I've got a couple of GoPros as well. My GoPro was normally for my hero shots, like I'd stop the bike at a mountain and I'd, I'd put the GoPro on a stand, and then I'd uh, then I would um, just go about my business. The GoPro would take a photo every 10, 15 seconds. So now this is uh, uh, the, the next videos of me getting into uh, Jarko or getting closer to Jarko. I was actually I had a big shower. I didn't, it didn't rain on me, I don't think, but there was a big shower in the town before I got there, so I was a little bit wet. Um, nice hotel, um, average internet as usual, but a, a really pretty hotel. I had my little spa bath on the roof, which you might say, oh, that's really nice, but on my balcony, I had a spa bath, but I, uh, I used that for washing my clothes. So, <laughs> that, not that they'd be happy with that, but I just chucked all my riding gear. I was there for two nights, so I got home, chucked my riding gear in there, uh, and then just dried them out on the balcony. Um, over over two days so I stayed two nights here so the plan was to spend a couple of nights here in, in Joko and then head to the uh, Panama border where um, you will see that I got wet uh, it pretty much rained every day uh, the first day into by the time I got to the border of Panama it was pouring with rain and it rained all day and all night just pouring you know Sometimes I just had to stop over. I couldn't couldn't see it all. It was just getting too dangerous. Um, and uh, but I met a really cool guy there, Eric, who's now in South Africa, heading to Cape Town. Um, he's basically finished his job, a financial guru type uh, expert, and uh, and he just decided to learn to ride a motorbike and travel the world. And you know he's he's a really good photographer too. You know, so. Uh, <coughs> He takes some great photos and great videos. It takes the time to do that. And he writes really good on his Instagram. Um, uh, he writes he writes really good uh, uh, posts as well. So, um, yeah, so I decided to spend uh, two nights here. It's a bit of a bit of a tourist town, like there's casinos and crap like that, which I never have anything to do with. It's just a waste of time and money. Um, but a nice town. Some decent sort of beaches, beautiful sunsets, uh, but again, very touristy. Decent sort of food, that, you know, there's, there's some street food that I had there that was really nice. Um, but again, it's, you know, because it's touristy, it's a, a little bit more expensive uh, than what you would get from just a raw town, uh, which I, I sort of seem to prefer. But at the moment, for me, everything was about the bike having the accident. Um, two days ago and having a, a front tyre that's, uh, that's slowly leaking um, and rim damage on both the rear and fronts that have been repaired but not repaired uh, well enough. Uh, I was My goal now was basically just getting to to Panama City because I'd already, by now I'd already ordered the rim from Miami and it was getting shipped to, to uh, Colombia and I had to organise with those people there that they were going to receive them. Um, and get all that crap done, you know, like I had to, so I basically, my goal was just to get to Panama City. So I basically skipped through, spent a f two, two days, uh, two nights in, uh, three days in, in Costa Rica. Um, I think I'm at about November the 16th now. And so I'm on track to get to Panama on time and I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, my, my issue was now, by now my bike was losing Instead of one PSI an hour, I'm losing like three to four PSI an hour, uh, if not more. And so basically I'm stopping, uh, and that's why I said one of the must-haves on your bike is your compressor, your mini compressor, air compressor. Um, this is Jaco. Um, just because, you, you know, with these sort of things, I, I have to reinflate my tires about every two or three hours now. So it's okay, anything around two hours is fine for me because I stop every two hours for 15, 20 minutes so I can just uh, fill her up. Um, and, uh, and I was starting to learn that if I put it, if I put it really high, um, at like 30, if I put it to 34, 36 PSI, 
it went down faster. And once it got to about 26, 25, 24 psi, the loss rate of air was was less. Obviously, when you think about it mathematically, that makes sense. You know, the more pressure on the on the leak, the more air that will be dispersed from that leak. So um, I sort of found the sweet spot by inflating it only to about 30, 30 psi. I was only losing. Um, so I, I was basically trying to work out that uh, with the, with the air levels that I was only after two hours I was right to fill her up again. You know, but putting it up to thirty six psi just it just deflated down to thirty within a few minutes, within ten minutes. You know, and then from there it got slower. So I was just inflating to thirty psi, and I was stopping about every two hours. But that would get worse as I got uh, further down. I was basically. By the, by the time I got to Panama City, I was uh, inflating it about every 30 minutes, which, you know, not good. Um, but here I'm coming up, I'm pretty sure this is the street that I was on. The hotel I started to see up here on the left, um, nice hotel, it's about 500 metres from the main, here it is. Um, it's about 500 metres, I'm going to drive right up now to the main drag. Maybe, maybe the hotel's a bit further, further up than I thought, maybe it's up here. No, that, I've, uh, I've, gone, I've gone past it. So that's the main drag up ahead there. Let me just piss funny around. Um, but you know, there's some uh, little cafes and restaurants along the way. It's a pretty typical Central American uh, tourist town. And no nothing really special there. <clears throat> a lot of hippies. Um, but as you can see, it's a little bit further. It's about maybe 500, 600 metres from the corner. Um, and they're building across the road as well. I think the same company is building. So this. You can see a pretty, it's a pretty decent sort of hotel. Guy come security, and it was 24 hour security. Could park my bike right out the front. He's telling me I've got to move my bike to the other side. But I'm just going to tell him. I oh know I'll move the bike. Yeah, there. Um, ask him to move the cone. Um, <coughs> yeah. So security 24 hours, you know, it's pretty good with a bike. I'll just park on the disabled. I'm disabled anyway, my friggin' knees are terrible. Anyway guys, um, thanks for listening again. If you've got any questions or comments, just leave them and uh, I'll answer them as soon as I possibly can. Um, I hope you have a, a great day and uh, we'll talk soon when I head to Panama.